murder mysteries. There is plenty of them to go around, but if you ask me, few of them are as interesting, chilling, and morbidly perverted as the case of Bella in the Witch Elm. The year was 1943, and the Second World War was in full swing across Europe. The events that unfolded in the case of Bella took place in a village named Hagley. It's located in the West Midlands of England. While most of the larger cities suffered bomb raids, the country was considered a safer place for people. In Hagley, there was a forest not so shockingly named Hagley Wood. A very ominous forest, if I say so myself. And the fact that in one of the old witch elm trees, a body had been pushed, doesn't exactly change my view on the place. So, it began on April 18, 1943. Four boys were out poaching in Hagley Wood. They weren't really allowed to poach there, but they had a very keen interest in hunting birds' nests. One of the boys, a 15-year-old lad named Bob Farmer, was climbing up a tree. He took a peek inside and saw a skull. He wasn't afraid because he hadn't realized it was a human skull yet. So he poked and prodded at it with a stick and managed to scoot it closer to him, so that he could see what it was. Now he was afraid. He and the other boys could now see that it was a human skull. A piece of rotted flesh and a chunk of hair was still sticking to its cranium. However, the boys made each other a promise not to say anything about their discovery, because, as I mentioned earlier, what they were doing was illegal. So they went home with the image of the skull surely fucking with their heads. The youngest boy in the group, Thomas Willits, couldn't get the horrifying discovery out of his head. And with a feeling of swelling dread, he told his parents what had occurred that day when the boys had gone poaching in Hagley Wood. The police were contacted, and they went to the scene. However, back in those days, light was scarce, just as most things, since they were in the middle of a brutal war. So the police couldn't use flashlights to look at the crime scene in the middle of the night. Instead, they dispatched a couple of officers to guard the location. And they returned to the witch elm that morning. It was a grim sight, and they noted that not only had her head been stuffed into the tree, but the rest of her, except for one of her hands, had also been stuffed in there. How do you get a skeleton out of a tree? Well, apparently you cut it down. So they cut it down and started investigating the remains. None of the bones appeared to have been broken, although the body was thought to have been inside the tree. For about two years, so the skeleton wasn't exactly well put together anymore, if you know what I'm saying. As I've been referring to the body as a she, I think you can guess that the medical examiner did find that it was in fact a female corpse. What boggled their minds somewhat, though, was her cause of death. But rest assured, I wouldn't have made this video if the death was natural. What they did find was a piece of cloth. That had been stuffed inside her mouth, and the hypothesis was that the piece of taffeta cloth had suffocated her to death. The body had then been jammed down the tree before rigor mortis had set in, because it wouldn't have been possible if the body was stale. Then they found her hand. There is two versions of the hand I managed to find. One says her hand was found in close proximity to the tree, and one said it had been buried in close proximity to the tree. The cop also managed to find an identification card belonging to a female, and they probably thought to themselves that they had identified the body. But the woman to whom the card belonged to was alive and well, and she had no idea how it got there in the first place. So let's just summarize this quickly here. There's a skeleton inside a tree trunk. It's a female who has been dead for about two years, and a cloth had been shoved into her throat, suffocating her. And her hand had been cut off. Another discrepancy is whether the body was naked or clothed at that time of death. Whichever scenario is true, they did find remains of a dress that belonged to the victim. They also noted her lower jaw had been operated on by a dentist not too long before her death, as well as having a tooth pulled out. 
A couple more details was that her height was estimated to be about 5 feet tall and her hair was mousy colored. They estimated her to have been 35 years old at time of death. And the cheap wedding ring was found on one of her fingers. Who was she? And why is she called Bella? Well, I can't tell you who she was, but there are other stuff. It's coming next. Police started contacting dentists all over England, but none, not a single one, remembered operating on a woman that fit her description, that had her very special lower jaw, as well as having the tooth pulled out. So back to square one. 3,000 missing persons cases was skimmed through but nothing was found. The days became weeks and the weeks became months. The case had gone cold, both in media and in the police force. But a spark would be lit in December of 1943. That's when weird graffiti started appearing around Hagley. The first message that appeared was written in white crayon and it said, Who put Lubella down the witch elm? Not long after, a second one was found, seemingly written by the same person, and this one said, Hagleywood, Bella. The third message written on a wall was made again by seemingly the same person and this one said Who put Bella in the witch L? This was the phrase that caught on. From that point on the lady in the tree has been known as Bella. These messages never stopped. They still appear to this day. Although I think it's pretty safe to say it's not written by the same person anymore. I mean come on. The case is 75 years old. It almost feels more like tradition, a pretty fucked up tradition. So, the stage had been set for theories to come raining down the case. Let's run through these theories next as we explore the question of who Bella was and why she was put in the witch elm. Where do we begin? Let's begin with the letter. In 1953, a journalist by the name of Wilfred Byford Jones received a letter that claimed Bella had been killed after being involved with a Nazi spy ring. Eventually, the woman who had sent the letter came forward to the journalist and decided to tell her full story. She said that her husband Jack had been working at a munitions factory in the early 40s and had gotten a large sum of money after meeting a mysterious Dutchman. Jack had then told his wife that he had been passing information to this Dutch guy as he was a Nazi spy and this Dutch had a female accomplice. She posed as a cabaret performer at local theaters. One day Jack had met this Dutch spy at a pub in Hagley and when he arrived the Dutch man was arguing with a Dutch woman. The Dutch guy ordered Jack to drive the couple away but the argument got heated in the car to say the least and the Dutch guy strangled the Dutch woman. The Dutch and Jack then carried her into Hagley Wood and buried her, if you can call that bury, in a hollow tree trunk. Jack had been so traumatized by what he saw that night and he suffered nervous breakdowns, eventually even being institutionalized, he would die later that same year, 1941. One thing that speaks for this is something I came upon while digging into this, I don't know how true it is, but let me explain. That night two guards was patrolling near Hagley Wood when they saw a car parked. They thought it was weird that someone would waste precious gas in times of war to drive out there and they went up to the car and looked inside. They saw a naked woman laying in the back seat with a jacket covering her as well as a man in a uniform sitting in the front seat. They figured the couple had just been two lovers and so they didn't think much more of it. One thing about this theory that strikes me as odd is the argument at the pub. Wouldn't there at least be some witnesses? Maybe there was a witness, maybe it was covered up, I don't know. I also find it convenient that she told this story 10 years after it happened and that her husband was dead so there was no one else to corroborate her story. But that's not the end of the story. 
because there was a Nazi spy operating in the Midlands in 1941 and he had a Dutch girlfriend named Clara Bella Donkers and she was apparently living in Birmingham at the time. But to muddy the waters further, a man named Johannes Marinus Donkers was captured in 1942 and he was held as a Nazi spy. The same last name as this Clara Bella gal. Something else that supports the theory is the sightings of parachuters in the Hagley Wood area. Apparently Nazi spies liked to parachute into England at the time. A Nazi file was also said to have been seen with a list of code names for spies operating in England at the time and one such name was Clara. Which of course is the first five letters of the name Clarabella. Not only that, the spy with the codename Clara was said to have parachuted into the Midlands in 1941. Another let's call it part of the same Nazi spying theory came to light when it was found out through newly declassified MI5 documents that a man named Joseph Jacobs was caught parachuting into Cambridgeshire in 1941. Joseph Jacobs was eventually executed by firing squad in the Tower of London, but on his person they found a photo of a German cabaret singer named Bella Bauerle. She had been in Birmingham for years and would have gotten a good hang of the British accent. A perfect spy in other words. Joseph Jacobs claimed during his interrogation that she was supposed to parachute in after him, but that since he was caught she probably wouldn't. The funny thing is, Bella was never seen or heard from after 1941. The cabaret singer Bella. The other Bella is dead. Which isn't as shocking if she was a spy, but still. So what the fuck am I supposed to make of all this? Is Clarabella and Bella Barle the same person? You know, I went into making this video with a dismissing attitude towards the whole Nazi spy ring theory, but I gotta say the sauce is in the pudding, you know? Although I gotta say not much physical evidence has surfaced, despite all the declassified war records and no one else in the supposed spy ring has ever been identified. Plus she was buried pretty deep in a forest that only the locals would have been familiar in. But maybe, just maybe. The corpse in the tree had a love for swastikas and tiny square patches of facial hair. Anyway, there's one last theory I want to discuss. The theory is that Bella was a gypsy and that she was murdered in an occult ritual. That's why her hand had been removed, because in witchcraft you chop the hand off your victim and then you own their soul or something. At least that's how I think it went. I'm not really as up to speed on my gypsy witch lore. Holy shit, that theory didn't last long. Well, I don't know what else to say. I'm kidding, I know exactly what to say, because I have left out a detail in the story. That detail is that Bella's remains and autopsy reports just seems to have vanished. When police were planning to have a look at her remains and reports, they discovered that what they were looking for just wasn't there anymore, which obviously is a very suspicious thing. Maybe the MI5 took her remains and reports, but wouldn't they have popped up when they declassified all their stuff? Or maybe the coven of witches that murdered poor Bella used some of their dark arts to hide it. Or maybe there was a sick perv working there at the time and he brought a little too much of his work home with him. I honestly have no idea what to even think here. There's no actual suspects, there's just a bunch of theories. The only thing that can actually hold up is the Nazi spying theory, but I actually think it's something else, close but different. If she was a spy, I don't think it is as complicated as the theory suggests. It may have even been coincidental that she died even though she was a spy. That's why I usually don't like theories too much, they tend to get way too complicated and try to weave this incredible net over something that sadly is so normal as murder. Plus it was World War II, all she would have had to do was suggest she was a Nazi sympathizer in front of the wrong person. I mean I do think it's likely she was German or something like that, because they couldn't find any records that fit her description in England. This rabbit hole is too deep, I don't like rabbit holes, I like nice, clean, shaved, oh no wait, I'm sorry, my mind was slipping. Anyways, the end of the video. 
I'll be back to check in on you in about a week or so. I don't like setting a specific day because I work better with less pressure. But until then, spread the word. Thank you for watching. And good night.